To me, this was an art project. You have a stated goal, you have uh, guidelines and ethic that you set up for yourself about what's correct with an appreciation for aesthetics. That's surface texture. It's uh, symmetry or not, balance, grace, the caliber of the welding, the development of skills to a high level. It's not only miles an hour, but it's the effectiveness of what you've created. All of those things are the art. It's that draw, it's not just work. This becomes art. My name is Jerry Weeks Baker. I first worked in the racing game, if you will, in 1966. I had some skills, I could weld, I could do some things, and I got really captured by the, the reality of high-level racing car fabrication, design, all of that, and I could do some of it. I segued into doing restoration and to doing bigger jobs, and my wife said, maybe you ought to consider having a project that's your project that you own. And I happened to go down to Joe Baird's shop. He showed me all around. He has all kinds of stuff going on. And there it was sitting in the corner. He said, you know, if you, by the way, if you know of anybody that might be interested in a project, you know, I have this, this thing for sale. On my way home, I'm driving back from Shelbyville. I thought, well, maybe I ought to do that. Maybe I just ought to do that. Well, I just called him back and said, yeah, I'll take that car. One of the most appealing parts of restoring cars is digging out the story. Find out who it was, find out how they did it, found out where they got the parts, etc. So as I dug into the car's history, then it became apparent that it really had a, a big history. That gave it importance to me that it wouldn't have had without that. The Bonneville Nationals is a uh, now 70 year old traditional event held on the Salt Flats near Wendover, Utah and it's a high-speed trials event. That tradition began with people who wanted to test the top speed of the cars that they had created, which was the genesis of hot rodding. They combined bits of this car and that car and soup up engines and go out and see how fast they go. Bill Burke is one of the seminal characters in this whole story of modifying cars and racing them on the dry lakes initially and then ultimately at Bonneville. He was pushing things forward that others didn't. As an example of his creativity, this car, the Super Shaker, is a good deal smaller than his first one. The engine was an overhead valve V-twin motorcycle engine, affectionately referred to for years as a knucklehead. His was enlarged to 90 cubic inches. It had independent carburetors that were custom-made aftermarket carburetors for auto racing engines. He used not only the Harley engine and gearbox, but he got a rear axle with a differential out of a Harley-Davidson servo car, which was the three-wheeler of the day bolted it all together, welded it all together into this very efficient little car that was capable of high speeds. He did get 151 plus miles an hour, which was almost 20 miles an hour over the standing record. It attracted a lot of attention. It got pictures in a lot of different magazines. It was pioneering and it was also appealing. The reality of taking on a project like this was guided by my desire to be able to follow a project the way I'd like to follow it, and that is to take the time to research it, the components, the methods, the materials, all of that. So a lot of it is the original car, the frame, original old Harley-Davidson motorcycle, server car wheels in great shape. I mean, they're old and cracked, but those are the original tires that it raced on in 1959, which I, it's just a huge victory in my mind. So I've brought it back to the point where it is today. The last 60 years of our lives have been this period of automotive ingenuity and whatnot, and all this stuff has happened. This is a piece of the beginning history of that period of time and that car culture. What those guys did is history, and uh, bringing the car back is honoring that and allowing people to see it. Mm -hmm.